Hello guys and welcome back again to the Babylonian Crypto channel. Today we're going to talk about Open and Squeef. And this is a new type of derivative called Power Perpetual. So this is uh, first introduced by Paradigm Research and implemented by Open. So Power Perpetual is a collaborative effort by both uh, the researchers in Open and uh, Paradigm. And it is sort of like a perpetual options. So the problem with DeFi right now is that uh, regular options they have uh, all these different expiry dates and different strike prices and you have hundreds of different contracts so it is not possible in DeFi to have this kind of model because you have very fragmented liquidity and that's why you don't see options taking off in crypto yet even though that we are more uh, degens than TradeFi and it is because of this uh, problem called uh, fragmented liquidity so this power perpetual consolidates all this liquidity into one single product and there will be no strike price, no expiry, no rollovers. So it's sort of uh, like a perpetual options. And power perpetual is just a derivative that is indexed to the power of the price of an underlying asset. So for example, if square. And the reason why you want to uh, power the price of something is that it gives you this uh, convexity uh, curve right here, as you can see. So you can actually compare the payoff of a uh, squeeze E square versus a typical 2x leverage. If if goes up, you actually make more money as compared to a uh, 2x leverage. And if if goes down, you actually lose less. So power perpetuals with powers greater than one will have positive convexity. And in options term, this is called positive gamma, which is the acceleration of the delta change. So if you see, a normal return is just 1 plus R. So power perpetual's return will be 1 plus R square. And if you expand out this formula, uh, you get R square plus 2R plus 1. So if if goes up 10% or negative 10%, you can see that uh, you get plus 21% and minus 19% instead of plus 20% and minus 20%. And again, this is just uh, another example to show that Squiff gives a much better payoff uh, than a 2x leverage. So how does this work? Uh, first, there's an uh, index price. This works uh, like a typical perp. So it tracks the price of an underlying asset. So in this case, uh, we will track if square. And mark price is just the market trading price. And square if is called squeef. This product is called squeef. So squeef is the power perpetual that tracks the price of if square. And it is the first power perpetual in the history of DeFi and TradeFi. So this is a really very uh, innovative uh, thing that they are doing. And it is very interesting to see how this works. Uh, in crypto. So long swift gives trader a leverage position. So you will get this exponential upside as well as this uh, limited downside. And you have an asymmetrical payoff with no liquidations. And a counterparty of long squeeze is actually short squeeze. So shorts have to put a if as collateral and they have to mean and sell this uh, old squeeze to the longs. And in return, they receive a funding rate for taking the position, but they risk being liquidated. So what is the catch for longs? Longs have to pay a much higher funding fee uh, for getting this convexity exposure as compared to a typical uh, 2x leverage or 3x leverage. So let's talk about uh, how funding rate affects uh, the mark price. So if mark price is equals to index price, a trader can hedge the 2r plus 1 uh, in this uh, equation here, 2r plus 1 uh, power perpetual, and go long power perps plus short 2x leverage. So if you combine the formula, you will get a risk-free profits of uh, R square. So it is not possible that uh, mark price equals to index price because all these arbitrages will come in to take advantage. It is even less likely that mark price will be less than index price because this means that shorts are paying longs uh, funding fee and this is most likely there will some kind of delay in arbitraging. And if you think about it, longs actually get paid for holding a asymmetrical payoff. So it is very unlikely because when this happens, definitely everybody will jump in to buy uh, this uh, squeef. So mark price will always be higher than index price and it will always be positive due to this convexity premium. And the funding rate is just the percentage difference between the mark price and what they are tracking, which is if square. So this is an example that is uh, done by uh, Friction. You can read more about it in their blog. So funding rate incentivize longs and shorts. And if mark is trading much higher than the index, shorts will actually come in because now they actually receive a higher yield. And if mark is trading closer to the index, longs will actually jump in since funding is cheap. 
and shorts will actually buy back to repay their loans. So just now when we talk about funding rate, longs actually don't pay the shorts this funding fee directly. It actually happens through a normalization factor called in-kind funding. So essentially, it just means that uh, the contract value will automatically and continuously change to reflect uh, this funding rate. So example, right now is 1 and then it becomes 0.98. Uh, after a few days, it just means that 2% has been paid from the longs to the shorts. So assuming all things equal, the price of squeeze will go down relative to the index and the shorts debt will be reduced due to the funding received because every moment the longs will keep paying the shorts a funding fee, funding fee, funding fee. So time is not a friend for the long and you want price to faster pump, you want it to be very volatile. And sellers collateral ratio will go up as they receive more funding fee and this will allow them to mean and sell more uh, old squeeze to build up more shorts position or either that they can withdraw their collateral to de-risk. So another concept that is closely related to funding rate is called implied volatility. So we've uh, done an impressive diagram over here which I will link uh, it below. So let's say implied volatility is 85%. It just means that over the next one year, if price would move plus minus 85% within this range. Or a more intuitive way to think about it is to find the daily volatility which is just uh, vol divided by square root of 365 and that will give around 4.4% each day. So implied volatility is the square root of implied funding times 365 and implied funding is the premium between the mark price and the index price. So this is the uh, actual formula here, long current mark over current index divided by funding period. So the funding period is 420 hours or 17.5 days. So you can think of this funding as the premium over mark and index that is realized uh, over 17.5 days. So in short, funding rate is nothing but a reflection of the market's expected future volatility. If you have high IV, you have high funding rate and low IV, you have low funding rate. And why do we talk about uh, funding rate and implied volatility? Because this actually influence the price of squeeze. So the ERC20 token of squeeze is called uh, old squeeze and one old squeeze is around one over 10,000 because this number will be too big. This number is E square. And what makes the price of uh, old squeeze go up and down is uh, this formula over here. So normalization factor is the in-kind funding, which is the automatic uh, contract value that changes uh, every day. And then you have the if price square and also the volatility with the implied volatility. So this volatility is affecting the price of squeeze. If the volatility is high, uh, price most likely will be high and volatility is low, this also will be low. So price go up when volatility is high and then your funding use would also go up and market is expecting high volatility. So when do you go long and short? For longs, you want to buy squeeze when you think if price will pump a lot in the short term uh, because due to this uh, convexity function over here, if if moves a lot in the short term, you actually earn uh, this uh, exponential uh, R square gamma here and you don't want to hold squeeze for the long term because of the funding rate. So over here you can see uh, example, let's say if if right now is trading at $450, the index price which is what it's tracking will just be the square of it and one squeeze will be divided by 10,000 and let's say if you put in a capital of 4,500, you get around 222 squeeze and the value of your exposure would just be the uh, position times the price of uh, old squeeze. So let's say in the future, if price goes up 10x to 4,300, you actually make around 410,000. And this is calculated by taking your uh, old squeeze position times the price of uh, one squeeze in the future. But you have to minus the funding to get your net profit. So you can see over here, the blue line is just the E square, the index. And the yellow line is actually your profit, which is uh, the E square minus your funding. So you can see over here that uh, if price over here and the if price over here, even though uh, around November the price is much higher, but your profit is almost the same. Because over here, all your returns uh, while waiting for if to go back to its uh, all-time high is actually eaten up uh, by the funding rate, which is this uh, red line over here. So you should never hold squeeze for the long term 
because of this uh, funding factor. So the time to go short is you think if price will trade sideways and market is actually overpricing volatility. So essentially you're going uh, short for. So current implied volatility is high, funding rate will be high because market is expecting high volatility. But you actually think otherwise. You think the actual volatility is not as high as expected. So realize volatility is lower than implied volatility. That is your view. And this would uh, turn to profits for shorts. And if you think about it, uh, this is how it works. So you deposit if as collateral, then you mean and sell uh, old squeeze at the highs because volatility is high. And high IV means you collect uh, premium funding, you collect more yields, and then you buy back and repay your debts when volatility drops. So you are earning from this uh, implied and realized uh, volatility spread. And here is one example uh, to calculate the profit for shorts. So let's say if price is 975, and this is the uh, square of if. And again, uh, for shorts, you have to put your collateral. So let's say the collateral ratio is 200%. You put in uh, 19,500, your squeeze exposure will be uh, this divided by 2 because half of it will be used as collateral. So your position stake will be around 1%, which is just your squeeze exposure over the index price. And let's say if if price goes to 1,050 tomorrow, uh, this is how much profits you will make. So the delta change will be uh, the price of if uh, change, and then the delta square will be just the square of the delta. And this is your funding received, which is the daily funding. This is just an example uh, times the index price. So your overall gain would be uh, this delta loss from uh, if price as well as the funding gain. So you can see that even if if price goes up, you actually still make money from the funding that is received. And you can see that over this chart here, this yellow line is your profit. And this uh, red line is the cumulative funding received. And this blue line is the price uh, change in if price. So even though if price is slowly going up, 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 but your overall profit would still be going up because your cumulative funding is uh, much more than uh, the change in if price. So you can see over here, uh, as long as the cumulative funding received is more than the daily volatility of if price movement squared, you will be in profit. And one thing to watch for shorts is all these uh, collateralization ratio health factor liquidation risk and etc. So time is your friend here because as time passes, your funding will receive and your normalization factor goes down and your value of debt goes down. So you can see that the value of debt that you took uh, originally when you minted uh, Squiff is the original debt amount times the normalization factor times if price. So this will always go down over time for you without doing anything. So that is the good thing for shorts. And the worst nightmare is a violent uh, volatile pump. So in this kind of situation, you will most likely get liquidated uh, very fast. And this chart over here is to emphasize that uh, the price of if with now and tomorrow is not so important. What is more important is the daily movement of if. So let's say you can have uh, the same situation, uh, let's say for over two, three weeks. But let's say if in between if moves very volatile, let's say this one goes to 1,005 and then goes back to 870 and then goes back to 1,040, you will actually get this uh, very steep negative uh, blue line over here because every price change will be squared. So even if it goes up, goes down a big amount, everything will be squared and you will actually be uh, in a loss in this kind of uh, volatile environment. And finally, the most uh, attractive product that they recently launched is the crab. So right now there is a cap limit and every time uh, they open a cap, it is almost full, almost full, almost full. So it's uh, quite similar to the Umami USDC vault. So let's see how this crab works. So first you short Swift because it's very attractive. You collect a uh, very high use uh, for doing that. But the risk of going short squeeze is that your ETH might be liquidated if it pumps. So you hedge your ETH exposure by going long ETH. So the crap strategy goes short squeeze plus long ETH. And the result is to earn high yields from funding plus you get a delta neutral position uh, indifferent to ETH price, whether it goes up or down. So this strategy actually rebalance every Monday, Wednesday, Friday to maintain price neutrality. And you can see the payoff chart over here. As long as if price doesn't change too much, you will be in profit. But if if goes very volatile, then you will be in a loss. And this is just another way of looking at it. So there will be a profit threshold. As long as it stays within this range, you will be in profit. So during rebalancing, if if price percentage movement is more than or less than this uh 
profit threshold, which we will call X percent, you will be in an uh, unprofitable zone. And this X percent is actually based on the funding rate. And funding rate is based on implied volatility. So this actually changes every few days, every day. It is a variable dynamic figure. So low implied volatility means you get lower use and lower X percentage. And when there's lower uh, profit threshold, you have less buffer uh, for the price to move in the sideways range and you have a higher chance to lose. So the best time to go is when there's high implied volatility, uh, high use, and you have a higher buffer for price uh, to move within the range. And the last thing is to consider the rebalancing transaction fees, slippage, gas fees, all this also uh, eats into the returns. So in summary, Joe Clark did a very nice simple diagram that sums up all this uh, complexity that is going on uh, in this picture here. So you can see that this is the long, this is the short. So longs pay shorts funding for convexity premium. Shorts will pay long two times the return of if plus uh, if return square. And this is from the formula that we see uh, over here. So longs and shorts will exchange implied volatility and shorts get collateral return from their uh, deposited if. So the returns for long squeeze will be 2R plus R square minus funding. And again, this formula uh, comes from here, uh, power perpetual returns R square plus 2R. And the returns for short will be minus R square plus funding, assuming the collateral ratio is 200%. And what determines the returns for long and short will be the price of if, the volatility of if, as well as the funding rate. So that's all for today's video. I hope this video gives you a good uh, introduction on uh, what uh, Squeef and Paradigm Research are doing, uh, as well as how these power perpetuals work. So if you find this video helpful and you want to see more of such videos, uh, I would appreciate if you can give this video a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.